Hey Beverly Hills 90210 fans, are you ready to dive deep? Episode by episode, storyline by storyline, character by character, as we break down the making of your favorite zip code with your host, Charles <laughs> Rose. Did I say that? Harry yeah. Mullen. Oh, this thing about the, the, the real person, and we're going, what? We're getting rid of this guy. Pete Ferrero. I'm feeling wonderful. <laughs> Kathleen <laughs> looks crush, TV crush worthy. Like so many special guests. And all your questions. Live on the Beverly Hills 90210 show. Oh, yeah. As we put a dance now. Well, here we are live on the Beverly Hills 90210 show. And a lot has shifted in the last <laughs> 24 hours. Uh, some troubling things uh not you know just there's been some problems uh jessica klein our friend is dealing with a medical situation uh so she will not be joining us today and also uh heather mcadam who uh was going to be with us today also is dealing with a medical situation uh COVID oriented, so she will not be able to join us as well today. So uh, we pivoted as we do, as we've learned to do in 2020, though we're in 2021, so we're continuing that pivot. Yes, the pivot is even bigger now. <laughs> right. We got a whole year worth of pivot. So we're still covering uh, a little bit of cardio funk. We got a very special guest that's going to join us about that. And uh, then we're going to turn this show over to the fans. Uh, we've got some fans that are going to pop in and join us, and they're going to do. We're going to do an Ask Chuck anything. So anything from the five seasons uh, that you were part of, fans will be able to hop in and ask you questions. And we are going to work out getting uh, Heather back on the show because she was in green room, and we're going to look at doing something, uh, something to combine those two so that we can have her back after. And of course, Jessica Klein will come back at some point too. Charles, uh, have is this this is not the first time that you've probably had to switch something somewhere uh, in your in in, not, in the world of nine hundred two and zero, right? Plan B, Plan C, Plan D. You know, we 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 kept digging. If you oh know, yeah, I used to say in the, the beginning, in the first twelve, that when I would wake up in the morning with a bolt, I would know that there was a meteor with my name on it somewhere in the universe. And that meteor was going to hit me <laughs> and uh, it would find me and it would hit me. And a bad day was when three meteors would hit because <laughs> it would take three hours to dig out of the debris of each meteor in addition to whatever else was going on. So yeah. yes, I, I this is a meteor kind of day and we feel badly for our friends. Yeah, but uh, show we, we go on. We were, we're thinking about we do. Pete does have some nice interviews uh, that we did that he's not released yet. We're thinking about, well, you could put that on as well. But instead, we opened it up in case anybody wants to talk, because that's one of the fun things about the after parties is, yeah. you know, a few fans come on and they just shoot the shit, really, uh, or ask something about the podcast in, 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 in great detail because these are, you know, 902 ologists we're talking about here. That's right. Um, hey, Erin, I wanted to say hi to you. How is hi. Everything, how's everything today? Do you, do you get what I did there? Because you're with today. Doing pretty well. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. All right. So before we get jumping into this, Melanie Rose is also not with us today, because but she's she's doing some fun stuff with the Padres. But uh, her and Sherry Weiss have a really cool trivia night coming up on Friday. I'm going to play. I got to talk to her a little bit about trivia. I'm going to play that. And then when we come back, we will have our special guest uh, with us. Hey, Melanie. Uh, it's good to see you. I'm recording this earlier with Melanie for everybody who's watching this because uh, she's got a busy game day today. Um, but speaking of game days, you have a trivia thing coming up. So why don't you tell me what's going on with all that? Yes. So Trivia Night is this Friday, April 23rd, and I partnered with Sherry Weiss of Teen Drama Whore. So uh, 90210 Hunts and Teen Drama Whore are doing Trivia Night. Uh, we've got lots of great prizes up for grabs. We've got a $100 cash prize, a Hulu subscription. Uh, Charles Rosen is offering some signed scripts of choice 
from seasons one through five um, and lots of other prizes. We also added a random lottery during trivia. So no matter how many points you have, you're still eligible to win. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's only $10 to play. Uh, you can join anytime before we get started on Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And uh, visit 90210hunts.com. Click on the trivia tab and everything you need to know will be right there. So uh, make sure you sign up for that. I think they're all going to have a, a blast with that. All right, let's talk about cardio funk. Let's get into what we wanted to talk about a little bit, uh, Charles. Uh, there's a lot of things happening in this episode. Jim Walsh goes crazy at karaoke. Uh, he's obsessed with it. I've been obsessed with it in my life, so I get it. Um, and then, of course, you know, uh, Dylan is got this whole thing with uh, surfer uh, Sarah. And then Brenda has got something going on with. She, she's doing the workouts. This guy. <laughs> and he's doing the workouts. There he is. Uh, good old good old Tim Matthews, right? Yeah, <laughs> playing me. Tim Matthews. Um, it's, it's awesome to have you here, man. Uh, yeah, thank you. But Charles, let me ask you about writing this episode. Uh, it was important to stress the two relationships to put a little tension in between Dylan and Brenda. Is that what the purpose of uh, this, besides the amazing Jim Walsh performances, is that where we were going with this for this episode? Well, the, the, you, you start with, yes, with that notion that there would be, you know, romantic intrigue. And that, but I don't think in terms of creating the tension, I just think, it's both of these are natural manifestations. This is you go, you're, you're, you're cute girls in high school, high school, and you're out in the world and cute college guy is there. And this was an era when singles, uh, right, that the, the gym was still a, a pickup zone, uh, like a singles bar of an era before. So we use that kind of motif, at least. And um and, and the flirting that can go on, yeah. where we're at, which is natural. Whereas Dylan's story comes out of AA. Right. And, and him being there and a, a little more of the need and the sponsorship and the guilt and the the mutual um, the mutual dependence that, that, right. was, that was talking about. That. So they're not analogous, but they both go through something and, and you know, Larry Mullen, who does this with us, Hank, would be here judging the quality of the kissing. Right. I'm going to ask him about that. I'm, I'm a little him. shy to do that. Maybe Aaron will step up. But <laughs> I'm going to ask him about that. But listen, Hank, right off the bat, people are saying, OMG, as hot as ever, Hank. Uh, <laughs> so we're getting, we're getting all those kinds of fun comments. I'm so uh, Hank, glad I'm here. Hank the hunk. There you go. Right. Thanks, <laughs> Uh, I want to ask you, Hank, um, you auditioned for 90210, I guess, all those years ago. Uh, what was this process like for you coming into the world? I mean, this show is a super, at this point, it's fair to say the show is was doing pretty good, right, Chuck? We had landed. Yeah, the summer episodes worked. We now were in, um, you know, going through and, and heading towards a, uh, you know, a season ender. And, uh, and, and, you know, and the audience was, was fighting us. This particular episode I just was looking up was one of the higher rated episodes of the entire second season. Wow. Um, you know, pretty much. <laughs> Hank was there. So but I'm curious, <laughs> Hank, how about, for, so you come into this show. It's got to be, I mean, in crazy, yeah. uh, you know, walking into the world of this show. Well, the thing is, is that uh, I don't, Chuck, if, if I'm misremembering this, this was a supernova at this point. Um, the cast had all just been mauled at the Mall of America, I think, you know, remember that there, there was a press event or something like that. And I mean, I felt very lucky. I, I auditioned for the show twice and I got the job the second time. The first what did part, you do the first one, do you remember? It was, it was some cowboy kind of thing. And he was like 17. And I was a lot of things, but 17 was not one of them. And Darren Starr, who is hilarious, was in the casting office. And he said, Hank, I love your read. How old are you? When were you born? Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> and I couldn't come up with the year, of the, the year that I was born. I was lying. I was saying I was 18 years old anyway. 
but he said, listen, don't, go away. We'll find something for you on the show. And you guys did. And I, I got the, the part of this medical student that was going to take an aerobics class. And like Pete was saying, it's like aerobics were just, you know, they were just taking off at this point. But also 90210 was on this supernova journey. So I came into um, a really happy set, A, because there's nothing better than success. But also there was a lot of, um, you know, these these young actors, their lives were about to be different. And so I remember just looking back on it and I'm not, I don't think I'm revising this at all, but looking back on it, I was watching them film promos for their Christmas hometowns. Like they were doing Merry Christmas from my hometown zip code. And there was, you know, wow. Aaron Spelling was on set and, and uh, Shannon was in the midst of um, splitting time between filming this episode and going and doing Dick Clark's Rockin' New Year's Eve. So she was a special guest on that. I mean, I was just watching these lives change and, you know, sort of like um, feeling really lucky to be a part of it. So this was a Chris. Oh, yeah. Well, we, we aired it February 27th. So was this the episode we did right before Christmas? Were you there at Christmas time? It was around Thanksgiving. So everybody oh. was, you know, like November. So we filmed it in November and people were getting ready for New Year's Eve and and Christmas greetings from 902. And remember, it meant a lot because we had been filming since May. Yeah. And, yeah. We had summer episodes. You know, we did summer episodes. So we didn't yeah. stop. And and like we were talking about before we went on air that this was one of my first big jobs. I mean, I felt really lucky. And and I but I also was like young enough not to know what a big deal it was. You know what I mean? Like I was just acting, you know, I just wanted to do a good job. So I didn't know that the stakes were high because the show is really popular. So popular. And obviously you get thrown right into the mix working with the probably, you know, two of the biggest stars of the show. Shannon and Luke, uh, and, and in the middle of their relationship, right, the Brenda and Dylan stuff, um, I don't know that you would have even realized how big of a deal that was then, but uh, certainly now you probably realize it was a big deal to get put into that, right into the mix there. Yeah, and and yeah, and it's something I tell young actors, it's, it's, it's a real privilege when you get to be a part of one of these shows. And, you know, being a guest star, you, you always feel like you're perpetually at somebody's Christmas dinner or their holiday dinner. Um, but they were impeccable hosts. Um, I knew Luke a little bit from New York. And um, because I was courting his girlfriend, he wasn't too much in my storyline, but he he did come to set. I think it was like a Thursday out of the 10 days that we shot or the eight days that we shot. And, you know, it was a big, big hugs. And, you know, how's everybody treating you and just making sure that everything was, you know, he was, he was impeccable even then, you know, just a real gentleman and a host. Mm. I mean, I, you know, being number one on the call sheet, there's a lot of pressure and he just rose to it always. He, uh, he was such a gentleman. And let me ask you about um, Shannon. You know, you do a lot with Shannon. Um, yeah. What was she like in, in that time period? Um, you know, she was, it was all, there was a lot going on for her. I, 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 I didn't, I got to know her really well, really fast, and then didn't see her again for years. I, I, I think I ran into her in a, at an event and she was very kind and gracious and we said hello. But um, I remember we were filming in Altadena uh, where she lived. Yeah. And, and I remember her, her being reflective. Is this okay to get super personal? Is she gonna oh, like hate me for this? No, I don't think so, no. Anyway, but she was she was extremely reflective about looking at her stardom because she, we were looking at fans that had lined up on the streets of Altadena uh, to watch us film, you know, just to see the, the trailers. And she was like, I, I, this is wild. And she goes, you know, I just have a new boyfriend who's a who was a real estate you know agent. And she she had a Dalmatian puppy that was she had brought to set and. And she, so she was splitting her time between all that and she was nervous about getting to Dick Clark's rockin' New Year's Eve rehearsal on time. So she had a lot of pressure on her, but she was always prepared and she was kind. And when you have to be intimate with somebody on camera that you don't know, you know, there's always, you know, a little bit of trepidation and she made it completely comfortable and neutralized any of my anxieties, certainly. I thought she was great. Well, let's talk of speaking about the intimacy. Here's, here's a scene. Uh-oh. <laughs> I don't want to 
want you to do that. What? Oof. I shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Goes right back in. Oh, I'm so respectful. <laughs> well, you know, the camera is yeah. respectful. I was saying this to Pete in the watch along. So you, if you see if either of you agree with me on this, that for whatever reason, Shannon did not. Well, for whatever reason, the camera does not cover the kiss. We know you're kissing, but where the lip position would be, I guess, I, God, this is this is really, we need Larry here for the call. But for the, for where the lip position would be, it's blocked by your jacket. Well, yeah, it is. But I mean, just that's just good storytelling for you guys because it's about watching her experience it. It's, it wasn't about the kiss. So if the, you've, you've done a side shot, we wouldn't have gotten the window into how she was receiving that kiss. How her eyes would be doing it. Yes. Yeah, that was yeah. great storytelling. And well, how about we had a, sweater? This, was ace, this was our ace director, We um, Dan Adius. He directed 20 of them. You were talking about Dan. We were talking about American Dreams. So he directed you in that. TV yep. series, right? Uh, right around when was that? Two thousand two, two thousand three. That's exactly right. Yeah, two thousand four, I think, is when yeah. he directed me. Boy, I um, want Semmel and and uh, Prince. Well, I knew both very well. I really wanted to be involved with that show. It was a really nice show. Oh my gosh, wasn't that a gorgeous show? You know what it, it was, was about, Aaron? Do you remember that one, American Dreams? Oh yeah, a little bit. It was Dick Clark's show set in Philadelphia, and a yeah. fans. Oh yeah. So it used the show and it used the sixties and you know, uh, there were some narrative decisions that were made that impeded. I feel you guys moved too fast. Should have just slowed it up. It should have been the days you said stayed in the 1950s before there was politics. You would have been, and, and having the racial politics oh, under the surface because Philadelphia is Philadelphia. Sorry. I love the town. My kids went to Penn, but it is Philadelphia. Right, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, Jess says our kissometer is absent this evening. So we want to know, uh, I'm going to fill in for Larry here. How was the kiss uh, with with Shannon? That's, we, it was we, good. It was, she, was, <laughs> she was one of the most famous women in America at that point. I mean, you know, it's like lucky, you know? <laughs> I, I, I hope I, I hope. Yeah. No, she's anyway, I love that shot of like me going, oh, I don't care what you say. <laughs> <laughs> Aaron, you pointed something out before that he got brought into this other storyline. Do you want to mention what you what you had referenced before we came Yeah, well, I, I have a two-part question for Hank. What do you remember about singing Wild Thing with Shannon and also uh, with the karaoke storyline? Do you remember uh, which of the cast members kind of seemed the most into it or wanted to sing and if any didn't? Great question. Um, you know, Shannon was a little reluctant. Uh, we did a, we did a, you know, dum, bum, 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 and she wouldn't sing the first time, and she was just a little reluctant. And she said, "Well, Dan, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little hesitant because, you know, I'm trying to get an album off the ground." And he sort of like shook his head and he said, "Shannon, you got to sing." And so she goes, okay, so Brenda sings, but Shannon doesn't feel like it. And then Dan was like, that's exactly right. Take two. <laughs> so we sing. That's but, you brilliant. know, I was, I, I, I'm a singer, you know, I'm, I've worked in the musical theater and I was a little worried about being wild thing, you know. So I was like, oh, how, how, how's this awkward medical student going to sing? But I remember um, I am being really into it. Um, uh, Tori, I don't remember if she was into it or not, but uh, president of our union now, Gabriella. It's oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, she was she was into it. Um, she well, was like, actually, what was going on then? This is this is about when karaoke surfaced out from Koreatown, so this right. was pretty new in Los Angeles, and the cast got into it. That's why mm. karaoke's in this episode because karaoke was in their lives. And, and we actually at the, uh, at the Christmas party that we had that for in episode, right after this one in, in episode uh, two, well, I asked they, that karaoke was a big part of that party and, and me imp making a mistake and improvising some lyrics. Uh, the one time I stood up 
um, singing uh, uh, what, what you'd expect after those who've listened to this podcast for two years. It was the perfect, it was the perfect uh, song, Aaron and Pete. It was, I've been cheated, been mistreated. When will I be loved? That was my that was my song to the network, and uh, and uh, that was my summation of where we were up at that point. <laughs> and, and, and Chuck, right now I live in Tucson, Arizona, which is hometown to Linda Ronstadt. Just so you know, oh, it's it's it's. Um, we were talking about when when you hooked up before. We were talking and I get, about Lorraine Newman from the original cast of Saturday Night Live when she did an inaudible book. She was in my. I go back to elementary school with her. I saw her become an actress and an improv actress in high school. So it's always, and she's doing this, this, uh, you know, this book and she's, and you know, so someone who you've known from all this time and she's on Saturday night live and I'm watching her every week and she's with Mick Jagger for God's sakes. I That's remember right. that Pete going, yeah. wow, there's Lorraine. That was the only time I wanted to be on stage with really. <laughs> and then on this inaudible thing, she, she started hanging out with, with the guy she was dating at the time in the back. She started hanging out with Linda Ronstadt. And oh, I wow. wanted to scream right there in the, going through the Mojave Desert. You know, it was uh, in terms of jealousy. I love that. Uh, that Linda Ronstadt. She was the one when I met Karen, I had to say, if I, I'm going to be faithful to you, I love you, I want to be with you, unless I meet with Linda Ronstadt. <laughs> <laughs> and she's willing. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Linda well, You know, it's interesting to mention this, and I don't know that, that Hank would have been in, uh, mixed in with this, but uh, talking about famous musicians, uh, John Densmore from The Doors is in this episode as well. He plays um, uh, the... You know, at AA, yeah, the sponsor, the head sponsor. sponsor at AA, which you know, you you wouldn't have been a part of that storyline. But Charles, what about getting John Densmore into nine hundred two one zero? I know Todd, who uh, watches our show all the time, was so wanted to know all the details about that, and we asked Dan about that, and he's a little bit busy this week. But do you have any recollections, Charles? Of I think they were in the same men's group. There was a men's group that where people pounded drums. I, I wasn't a pounder, so I don't know that much about it, but people did this. I think Dan may have. And I think I, Iron John? I don't know was what it the... was. It was kind of a bonding thing that men would do. They would do ritual stuff, you know, men's yeah. groups and stuff. So anyway, that was going on. The gatherers were with the hunters. I'm not quite sure how it works, but there <laughs> they were. They met. He came on. You know, any, any, any friend of Jason is a friend of mine. Any friend of Dan Adius is a friend of mine. I mean, you know, seriously, we kind of ran the show that way. You know, it was, it was, oh, sure. And, and here's the work and, and, uh, and, and be serious about that at the time, but also to have a good time. So this was a good time episode. And there was always goofing off when, when the, the whole group was in the peach pit. No, yeah. no director wanted to go in the peach pit. It was too much, too much fun for the actors in there all sitting around the table. And you had to get the coverage, and everybody would be going crazy, and that kind of thing. And, you each, and of course, we were there, so you got your film in there. Hank, I'm curious to know if, um, you know, if uh, if you got recognized from this episode after it aired, and do you still get recognized uh, from this episode? There are two pieces of television that I am most recognized from. It's this one and Saved by the Bell. And I was, I was getting on an airplane with my then six-year-old daughter and we were flying back to New York City and somebody stopped me, like grabbed me in the aisle and said, are you that guy? Are you that guy that kissed Shannon? And I'm like, I, I think I know what you're talking about. My daughter is like this. Oh no, you're thinking of him. He was the substitute teacher on Saved by the Bell. It happens all the time. And so I was like, <laughs> Come on, come on. Anyway, yeah. I'm both of those people. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. But I did get recognized, and it was cool. And it was kind of cool. Yeah, that's very awesome. Erin, uh, do you have any other uh, questions for Hank before we, we dismiss him here? <laughs> Just a comment. There's a, a moment you have with um, Luke that I really love that's so funny when uh, I think you're at the Peach Pit, and Dylan says, so you met at aerobics class. And Tim said something like cardio funk, and then he says, "Take my pulse, please." <laughs> yes, I do. I, that, I had that line, didn't I? Yes. Yeah. 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 And then I said, "I'm a medical student," or that's a medical school student joke, or something like that. Yeah. 
I, yeah. was, I always played very witty guys. <laughs> banter. We needed banter. banter. You yeah. banter with the best of them, Hank. Yeah. Don't That's let your great. students push you around. You were a banterer. I promise. I promise. Yeah. Well, what Hank, a blast, guys. Yeah, this is great having you here, man. We really appreciate you dropping by and uh, saying hello for a little yeah, bit. Thanks, and uh, Thanks for letting me We will see you it. again sometime, I'm sure, uh, in this universe so in the 902 awesome. universe it always happens thank um, you all right, guys. Man, thank you so much for being here all right thanks appreciate it all right Bye. Bye. that was great you know good good catching up with hank um chuck i want to ask you before we start doing the uh ask chuck segment here about uh jim eckhaus singing um there's a lot of great karaoke here uh with eckhaus i can't i can't play it because youtube will just that would be the end of the whole show um, okay, I'll have to sing it. <laughs> Force me. I, I can't. What is a Christian wig? I can't sing. Don't make me sing. Don't make me sing. <laughs> well, there's a couple things I want to say here about uh, Alcalso. I want to get your opinion on his performances. But also, the reason why we covered Cardio Funk today, and it, it's got to be mentioned, as this episode is not on Hulu. This episode has been stripped. There's Because of this karaoke stuff, um, and all the songs, they don't even, it's not even on. We figured out that that is the common denominator. When there was any live action singing, Hulu, and that poor struggling company, Hulu, <laughs> won't pay CBS for, for these tunes because, you know, um, or whatever PCBS pays or pass on because, you know, these companies, both CBS and Hulu, just aren't making enough money. <laughs> They're just they're just barely holding on. I I you know I don't know if they're gonna make it through the end of the so year. Oh, <laughs> it, it's really unfair. So we're gonna spotlight some of them. A lot of them are the ones, you know, end of season ones. I know. You know, we we um but one of them's gonna be but I'm gonna announce this, you know, in June, the first week of June, we're gonna be a big family vacation in Hawaii at the same on the big island in the same hotel that my parents did that with us and took all my sisters and their kids to the island we would do that with with my our little family and um and i realized that one of the songs not on hulu was the one where the end of the summer season which was past not past with the hooky lao we're going to be in hawaii and Lindsay's going to be there so my kids so will dance the hooky lao and oh the amazing show based in hawaii because it hulu says no 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 we'll do palm springs weekend we'll do commencement we'll do a lot of real and then episode six and seven boy i mean episode six and seven season six and seven they really get eviscerated on on hulu because um this was the season we were really flourishing with the peach pit after dark that's right they were just so they just, you know, they were using it as a staple device, you know, and so everyone, rather than figure out how to do it, just cut out. And there's just too much, there's just too much profit in streaming, and there's just too much greed in Hollywood, and uh, what else is new? We have to work on this. This is one of my, one of my goals, and our goals here at the show is to get, minimally, we absolutely need to get this music uh, situation fixed. And well, then I think, I think that, you know, that we've, we've seen now the company didn't want to step up. We've seen that the Television Academy wouldn't step up. But uh, the mechanism that might make perfect sense is really, and, and who really has to restore this and, and step in is unfortunate, just like all the mess we have in other states around, uh, you know, is, is the federal government and That's the right. Library of Congress, mm. you know, who, who gives awards for preserving songs that deserve to be. In, but, well, well, you're having a whole body of, of television be cut for for right. a, a, a business decision as if that's it. That's the only criteria that matters. And I and you but that's what that's how it was. And you're starting to feel in this era that we're living in right now that might be something that could be altered that's right and that's where we're at right now all this right well somebody wants to stop by and say hello our buddy larry mullen it's larry larry in massachusetts uh, yeah how are you man you know, I'm, should... pretty, I'm pretty crashed out I, I you know we traveled uh you know from 11 last night to uh about two o'clock we arrived today so it's always a journey. yeah two in the afternoon chuck 
I and said, the dog I said, was great. The dog was great. I was the wondering how the was, dog was. Yeah. He, he was great. But then when he got, he realized that he wasn't home. He kind of shut down. He kind of like went into a corner like I expected him to. And uh, he's, you know, he's trying to deal with it. I, I took him out. You know, I, my car started right up, Chuck. It's unbelievable. I put the, haven't started since July, last July. And I put the negative cable back and cranked it up. 2001 Subaru, man. Uh, thank God. Um, but I took the dog, you know, I had to keep the car running. So I took him out and he saw a bunch of wild turkeys. So I dropped the dog out so he could see the wild turkeys. And that was kind of, he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Ran the other way, eh? Well, he kind of held his ground, but the turkeys were all kind of gathering. You know, they took notice of him and stuff and they were planning an attack. Uh, so I got him out of there. But uh, what's going on here? Uh, well, all right, so we had we yeah, had a lot of mix-ups and, and shifting I around. I saw the Jessica email. I'm sorry. I hope she gets better soon. Me yeah, too. I'm, I'm our, our actress, who was going to be the focus, also had some medical issues in her family. So we had the guy. We had a guy guest star, very nice guy, Hank. Uh, Popped in. Yeah, came on, and uh, and now was, we're about ready to jump into uh, Ask Chuck Anything. And uh, we're, we're, we, we've got everybody standing by to ask you questions. Are you ready for this, Chuck? Yeah, absolutely. I uh, yes, right. anything. And, 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 uh, and I'm going to say good night to Larry. All right, right Larry. Good seeing you, man. Always good catching you. Have fun, you. guys. All right. Bye. All right. I didn't get to do what I really wanted to do with the Larry, which was to sing Wild Thing, but that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Hey, Here everybody. Is, here is this is now. This is oh, what our this is what our after dark Zoom uh, normally looks like. But yes. now we're letting them all pop on here to ask Chuck anything that you want to know. And also in the comments section, uh, you guys are popping your comments in as you usually do. If there is anything that you want to ask Chuck, we will uh, pop those questions in as well. Somebody has already shouted Caitlin out. So there you go, Caitlin. <gasps> Yeah, Caitlin is shouting out Caitlin, which yeah. is through me for a. I love you. All right. Okay, I want to know from Caitlin: Was this episode, this cardio funk, was it uh, parody worthy? I haven't watched it yet, and I haven't watched it in probably twelve years because the last time that I was going to watch it, I didn't have the DVDs, and it wasn't on Hulu. So right. it's tough. I will. I need to watch it this week, and I will let you know, and I will probably do a video well but you did do a video for us i want to share this with you oh, God. you did do this video for us this is a donna martin <laughs> impression this is a i think this is like season six or seven though right i think season but, six yeah yeah <laughs> this is great Oh, uh, you're so funny. This is really amazing. All right, go ahead. So was, wait a second. Wait a second. I mean, I mean, I know realize in this group, of children, but I'm the uninitiated there. What was Donna doing? Was she just was there? Did she put on a wig and dance? Put on a show? Is that is that the deal? No, Donna, that was her actual hairstyle. Yeah. That was her season six hairstyle, and I could never do that, so I had to get a wig because I would yeah. never, I would never dye my hair that you color. Do that. All right. But yeah, it's a music video that Donna that Donna does. All right, Caitlin, we're gonna start with you. And Aaron, you know, if you want to hop in here with answers or thoughts about what they say, you're welcome to do that too. But obviously, it's ask Chuck. All right, do you do you have a question for Chuck that you've always wanted to know from the five seasons that uh, that he was there? Me and some other people on my Reddit page, we all want to know why Andre and Steve were never a couple. I'm torn. Okay, good question. <laughs> Why was, we're going to say goodbye to Caitlin? It's good seeing you, but uh, go ahead, Chuck. Why was uh, Andrea and Steve? Is that what you said, Andrea and Steve? I want to be yeah. clear. With that. Why were they never a couple? Well, they obviously really had good chemistry together, right? They enjoyed each other. We had teased them. They had kisses. They went on to the do the running for the egg. There was a lot of things there. But remember the, the how you see once once we started getting really focusing on romance in the 90210 sphere, you know, you when you put a couple together, you're you're limiting what you're going to do with those characters. There's no other thing that happens. And you're going to get them together, and then what's going to happen? You're going to have to break them up. 
And so whereas that became the cycle in six season six and seven, we still weren't quite there wanting to to we didn't feel we had to turn as far inward as that. Gotcha. Having them be a couple was turning inward. Um, and we were doing it with Brandon and and Kelly, so it would be it would be and, and and we had always David and Claire and David and Donna. So did we need more romance? No, they could be spheres into others. And then Steve can be the bad boy without uh, having to um, you know apologize to his girlfriend. There were some times when you guys, uh, you know, played with it. You know, I think he compliments her hair in one of the episodes and all that stuff. So they always had like a really great bond. And sometimes you're just friends with people, right? Doesn't that, isn't that a thing? It doesn't always have to blossom. That's my opinion. Erin, do you have an opinion on Andre and Steve? I mean, I agree with everything Chuck said. There I you can't go. talk that. <laughs> she would have been great working on 90210. <laughs> With that, with that attitude, right? <laughs> yes, yeah, I heard. <laughs> All right, our good friend Connie Ziegler. You, you, I really want to tell you that I really, really loved what you said in the video. Um, where did she go? Is she gone? Connie Ziegler. She, she got shot. You can see. You mentioned okay. her name. No, not now. <laughs> How can you do this to me, Pete? <laughs> All right, uh, Michelle, go ahead. Her, you know, she's off, she's in Maine, so it's a little... That's right, there must be some streaming issues there. Go ahead, Michelle, what do you got? <laughs> <laughs> um, I was just wondering, did you ever consider bring Kelly back together with Steve? Good question. No, again, because not, not as any other function but just that we could then keep, you know, you want in some ways when you, in drama, you want characters to change. In comedy, you kind of want characters to stay the same. You know, I remember an old TV show, the, you know, the, the, the original Mary Tyler Moore show, and they had a hysterical character on it, which became Ted Baxter's wife. And she was an instant. She was just really funny. But once they was started to explore her feelings, that the character was over, and so guess what? So was the show was ending its run. So you know, to have the the that you know Steve just pined for Kelly and can't get Kelly, and the unrequited in that regard service the humor element that was still operative in seasons one through five. You know, I don't know if that would have been enough humor for six and seven or even fits into the brand of humor that came there and especially to eight, nine and ten. But I I really that was a complete other, you know, turn in the direction. Right. I got you. I, I mean, I don't think that they ever went down that road. I know there was one season where Steve woke up and thought that he was supposed to be with Kelly. And then I think Brandon was dating her. So uh, that's, how, well, that's how season five starts. Right. That's season five. Hawaii, was this Celeste knows that he's going to do this with Kelly. And, 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 you know, I think that guy, you know, I know that in my experience, I had a high school girlfriend uh, I was really tight with. And then the moment we graduate, that's it for that. Uh, so then it became off again, on again, off again, that kind of thing. And, you know, sometimes you get the resolve. Yeah, we're going to get back together today. And, you right. know, you're like, oh, no, no, we're not. No, not today. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right, Michelle, thank you for that question. Uh, very good stuff. Erin, do you have an opinion? Well, like, Connie's back. Yep. I'm going to get to her in a second. Do, do okay, you have an so. opinion about all that, Erin? I didn't, I never really wanted uh, Kelly to get back with Steve. Like, I liked their um, relationship you know, as exes when it began, but I just, I don't know. I never really thought about that much. The same. All right, Connie, I was going to go to you and then you, you, you bailed out on here us for a second there, but I just I'm having to... Wi-Fi issues. Yes, yeah. I know that's, that's very popular these days. I'm, I wanted to say, no, I really appreciated what you said in the, um, in the video uh, last week. It meant a lot to me and to all of us. So thank you for, for that beautiful comment. Um, so I, do you have a question here for, for Charles? Uh, when was the moment that you knew that the show was huge? When the show was huge. When was the moment that you knew that that had happened? Well, to the extent of it, uh, I, I actually know when the network executive, I mean, and this is going to sound really, really shallow Hollywood stuff, but it's true. 
when, when the network executive called me up at the end of season one, knowing that they were going to be going into the double episodes and what the plans were and what the thing, he just said to me, you know, Rosen, you're going to be a very rich man. And that was that. So that was confirm. That was real confirmation that something was going to happen. But in terms of the relationship in the in the world, I think I've told this story. I, I, I we went to a movie theater. It was hard to go to movies. It was hard to do anything. You know, sports events, movies. Just was, you know, you couldn't go out. There's so much in, hour intensive stuff when you're running and running these many episodes. So Karen and I snuck out to Century City to see a movie. I think it was Dead Again. Uh, and there's an interesting story on the heels of that as well. So remind me about the Dead Again casting thing. But we go to see Dead Again. And there are two um, really nice looking young women. They look co-ed from UCLA, which it was very close to these theaters. And Karen, I'm so exhausted that, that we do role reversal. And Karen goes out and gets the popcorn and, and the drinks. And the... Uh, and the music, you know, in the beginning of the theater, they would have the music playing and, you know, just to warm up the, you know, in, in, you know, waiting for the show to begin. And the song was Breaking Up Is Hard To Do from Neil Sadaka. And I guess it was the weekend of that wild, uh, you know, the weekend wildfire was on that, um, that week, that, that Wednesday, right. that Wednesday it would have been and or Thursday it would have been actually. And, um, and so they start talking about the episode in depth. They start singing. They re they thought they realized, oh, I know where this song we was on that episode. Yes. And then they started debating the episode. <laughs> then they talked about the episode. Then Karen came back, heard them talking about the episode. <laughs> and unlike me, shy one made contact. And we talked to them a little bit about the episode and having that experience that it flashed through my mind as, you know, in the background here and, 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 you know, overworked and underloved. I just went, well, you know, you, you know, don't um, know me at all. You don't even know that I exist, but a little bit of your heart and your imagination belongs to me. Yeah. You know, that yeah. feeling and that was that <laughs> feeling of knowing. And with that uh, confirmed also, right. That I always felt that there was responsibility in what we were putting out there, the imagery, the characters, and stuff like that that went part and parcel of the fact that we had this permeation, this influence. It's incredible, and it's it, it is so it is so poignant and true. And I'm glad that you had a little bit of that uh, back in the day, Connie. It's really good to see you um, as Thank always, you. and good luck with your Wi-Fi for the rest of the evening. <laughs> Thank the you. <laughs> Hopefully, you don't have any zooms Bye, coming. Bye, -bye. Bye. Thank you. Uh, okay, um, Leanne. Let's see. What do you What do you got uh, in the? Hi, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that. Note you sent. Oh, you got the card. That's we awesome. Got, we did. We got back from. We were out of town. We were in U Las Vegas, Utah, Las Vegas, and home. And your card greeted us. It was really nice. We appreciate nice. it. Nice. Uh, trouble sitting next to me right now. So I yeah, hope yeah. we won't jump on the computer. But um, Emma Dorkin wrote out my question. Um, I'm interested in the butterfly effect of, this, of the storylines and casting. Uh, you once mentioned that you originally saw more happening with the nurse in the dreams of Dylan McKay, but she fell a little flat. Were there other... Are there ever other any storylines or characters or possibly casting choices that you saw going one way, but it went another? Oh, yes. Well, you know, what if we had had really a magnetic, interesting actor to play the drama teacher in the first summer episodes instead of the guy he just he it was you, you realized this was a man who played Elvis. Right. He had been cast in Elvis, and I cast him because he was cast in Elvis. <laughs> he was cast to be a lead. Elvis, I was so stunned, only went six episodes, but I went, oh, ABC didn't know what they had. <laughs> Wrong. Episode L ABC knew exactly what they had and knew to pull the plug. <laughs> like, we knew to pull the plug because it just wasn't working. Yeah. So that was, I think the the real a, a big disappointment uh, uh and truthfully and then the nurse which just wasn't gonna be going forward i think those were the two that you you know you plan for an arc 
Right. You no. Know, um, but then, like we were just talking about um, the, you know, the episode uh, um, Cardio Funk, and in the storyline with um, Dylan, there's the young, you know, her boyfriend, the young alcoholic, and it's the actor Titus Williver. That's right. The star of Bosch. Yes. And he's been in every Ben Affleck movie and plays these executives. He's had a fine career. I was excited by that. He's a Peter Klaus uh, level totally. of, of, of accomplishment. So, uh, you know, so they, he was there. So it was, uh, <laughs> I was excited by that. So sometimes you have the reverse or sure. you get Peter Krause. And remember, for a long time with casting, uh, you know, they, they didn't send the actors to us. Mm -hmm. And the big agencies wouldn't. You wouldn't, you know, Drew Barrymore wants to do the show. Well, that's when CAA or William Morris and uh, ICM or one of them get involved. But otherwise, they're not going to, they're not about servicing the episodes. Those are other talent agencies. Mm. So those, even the better ones are those other talent agencies. It took a while and and maybe that's the another answer to the question about the, that Connie had. When do we know? We started getting better actors, right? Mm -hmm. And that, uh, that yeah. happened after the summer episodes of season two. To follow up on Leanne's question, when you realize this, the the the, the Elvis actor isn't working. What is that like internally? Because you guys, you know, it's a big deal. It's a big show. You put a lot of faith <clears> in the <throat> character. You know, you go through a whole process. It's a whole process to get on the show before they even see the taping, you know, and now you're there and now you see it. How soon do you realize, okay, that's not going to be what we thought it was. And then do you immediately go into like shuffling the deck mode or what's that process like when you realize it? Uh, you know, yeah. What are you going to do? I mean, you really, you, you have no, when, when you're on a line and assembly line, you have no choice. Right. And, and it, if it's really not going to work out only, only once did I shut down the show to um, go back and reshoot something. I barely ever did reshoots. I only did it one time. What and was it? It was when uh, it was it was his, um, reacting to Shannon's wardrobe choices. Got it. Uh, going to the peach pit and uh, Brenda's wardrobe choices, I should say. Right. And, and I was out of town at the time. And uh, there was a lot of problems with this particular episode, and they were we were looking at other things. But it, nonetheless, when that came about, we had to break continuity. And, and you know, so I try never to break continuity. You just don't want to do that, right? So you just start writing it up. So camping trip, you know, was an episode two that we'll 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 look at at some point. Camping trip was that buffer episode between the summer and the school and that we allowed to have the shift that gave us, and, and Karen was writing it, Karen had nothing to do with the writing of any of the summer episodes. So she was lined up to do this. And we always had that episode with to turn and make adjustments. Oh. But we knew that we were gonna get someone like Emily Valentine and mm. um, I had no idea that, you know, we would be forced to make her crazy. <laughs> uh, later, but you know, we, yeah. we did what we had to do. All right, Leanne, thank you very much for that question. I thought Thanks. it was good stuff, good conversation. Bye, we will see you. Always good seeing you. Yeah. All right. Um, Erin, do you have any thoughts on any of that that was just said? Um, speaking of casting, I was wondering after the green room, did you uh, know you were going to bring Sarah back? Good question. Great question. No, I had no clue at all. That was just something, well, who could we put Dylan with and what? how can we generate a story? And we did get the note that the audience liked references to things that happened in the past, in their past lives and things that happened in the show that had been seen. So that was used as in, in that regard. Uh, I'm going to let Lisa from here ask a question. Chuck, what do you think contributed most to your success as a writer for 90210? Hi, Lisa. Yeah, where are you? Um, Why am I not seeing your face in the window here? It's, I, it's, <laughs> it's made it for a very sad Wednesday night. Not <laughs> That's okay. Um, what was this? Well, you know, they, they honestly say something that to writers that I didn't really pay that much attention to starting out as a writer, 
which is they said, write what you know. And my first assignments, the first things I did were adaptation. And, and it was very difficult for me in this way because I was a movie writer and what those things. Should, but I was about adaptations. Mm. I wanted to know that this was the book that you want to do. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to as I'm going to take that stuff and I'm going to find you the best way to do that book you want to do that has all the information. These are the scenes you can get rid of. You can switch this around. You can do this. We can go straight through. We can get it. You know, there are all various ways to it, you can attack it. Mm. Um, and so I did a lot of those things. And I wrote about old. Uh, I wrote about an old headmaster and at, at a prep school. And I wrote about. Um, uh, I wrote about, uh, you know, a black family in Harlem. I wrote about a, a Hispanic family in uh, the Wilshire district here. And, you know, I so to finally say, write about something, you know, I mean, as much as I would do it, I mean, Beverly Hills High School, I knew about. Right. And all the only thing I didn't know was the lingo. Because mm. I remembered the feelings and the feels, as they say now, don't right. shoot that much. You have different permeances, they're different social norms that structure things out and and, and contribute to how you look at things. Hmm. But I knew I had that in common. So that was that was something that I could, you know, draw on. And 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 when the going got right and the fact that, you know, I already had uh, 12 years as a writing professional before 902 and 0 came up. So mm. I had the confidence and the arrogance to believe that at any given time I can write another, I can just write somebody under the table. Mm. I, I'm a better writer. Than, and you need to have that kind of feeling to go forward sometimes. Right. And um, so in this context, I, I felt that, you know, and, and I got to be the last typewriter. I got to be that, you know, the, that I could say, you know, that let's do it that way. And sometimes the network would push back or or even Mr. Spelling would. But, you know, very, even Mr. Spelling always would and always could. But but didn't to any great extent, at least on the scripts that, that Karen and I wrote. OK, Rebecca wants to know, Chuck, who was your biggest influence when writing for 90210? B biggest influence? You mean the style of of? writing or that's what i think yeah biggest influence in the style of writing well you want it to be uh, you know uh, i was much more in it, it well in terms of fiction it would be it would be um zwick hershkowitz it would be 30 something that would be the one that we we talked about that was a standard that was a good kind of tv but also kind of the pop sensibility of i wanted to be the writer for rolling stone mm. So what was hip in L.A., well, I'm also writing for L.A. So that was a big, you know, idea that, that you know, was in, in L, is L.A. writing and, and got more and more important as I did the show to go all around the town and show things, which I do feel, even though I'm not that familiar with what went on after I, I, I flooded away, but that, um, you know, that they went to Pasadena to do the Rose Bowl. Right. They went down to uh, the Queen Mary and they went to, you know, the, you know, cool places around to show the city um, was something that was still popular then and we could do. Um, totally. So those were my influences. Amanda, uh, do you have a question for, for Charles? Yes, I would like to know which was your favorite character to actually write for and about? Great question. I know. Mm hmm we all have our um, favorite characters, but the the um, as a as a collective room, I think we all really like to write for Brenda. You know, Brenda could could uh, one week be right there standing next to Dad, and the other be in 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 right in his face. You know, and the unpredictability of it, and uh, and, and all that. Because I'm a guy, it would have been easier for me to be say that about it was easier for me to write for the guys. And really, you know, at one point, and we've talked about this, it, it, you know, I had to say to Jason, don't you get a guy? He, he Brandon's me. So because I hung out with the with the group and I knew all that, but I didn't come out of it and have that experience and uh, and a few other things he didn't have. And so that's why I always say I'm a combination of Brandon and Steve. And but of those two. Um, 
you know, I felt the biggest obligation to Brandon to do Brandon right. Mm. Because Brandon could be, you know, just veer off into Sappyville or 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 self pity or you know whatever and places I, you know, wanted to not write him as. Um, and and Steve was just a lot of fun. Yeah. And yeah. Also, I'm ashamed, you know, all those things that he did bad. I I did most of them. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you for for dropping in with that question. Thanks, he, Connor wants to know. Uh, Connor. What was the process of letting Jason Priestley direct episodes? Um, <laughs> which must have been a bit of a risk. Yeah, your, your star comes up to you and says, I want to direct episodes. That's, that's <laughs> what the context is. And, and, it, and I felt that he knew. And also, you know, I think uh, uh, one of our directors, uh, the, oh, sorry, having a senior moment. You, okay. you, know, you know, the, uh, anyway. Um, in Whitmore, James Whitmore Jr. said that he looked, and Addie is too, he looked at the camera. He looked to what was going on. Mm. He was there, and he had experience, and he had the one thing that, you know, which is what Spelling saw, which is what I saw, which is what people saw, is that he really wanted it. And and that's, you know, that's, that's what shines through a lot. And so, there was, and also, so I had, I had confidence in him. I also had him, gave him a really ep easy episode to do. And also he had the incredible support of the production team, which he always had. Right. So he wasn't going to be just strapped out there uh, a little bit. So that first one that he did, Ditch Day, um, you know, that, that he, uh, so I, I had, he had done that. And then we did Vegas, and then the one that we really bonded on was when we did the 60s. And that's why when we had Jay on the show the first time, I wanted to talk about him as a director because we were you could see the growth of it. And I think... Um, I think Jason's a fantastic director. I think you yeah. look at some well, of the episodes that he did in his growth. I mean, he takes chances where other directors went, and I think, I think he's really, really incredible. And he knew these characters. I think he was sort of the perfect person to do some directing as an actor to right. turn... To I, think, I, I, I think Jay would be the first to tell you at a certain point, you know, he suffered from burnout from the show. Oh, I bet. Yeah. And you see that, you know, because it, yeah. just, it just never stopped. It just never stopped. Yeah, especially when you're doing multiple things like that. You're the center of the show, and then you're also... I, I don't even know how they do that. Yeah. But yeah, he, he, and, he and Whitmore and Eckhouse were the two that, that directed episodes uh, under me. And, and, I, and if would any of the other ones I would have let, if they really wanted to, um, you know, probably. Yeah. Probably. Julia, do you have a question for Charles? Um, Hi, Hi, Julia. Yeah, I do, but go for it. My camera, the, my camera's working, but something else is wrong. So just go ahead and well, ask. We don't know that. You're fooling us. You. Yeah, just go ahead and ask. Fool us. You could have fooled. Fool, okay. <laughs> you could have fooled me. All things working, and I would have. This is actually Nicole's um, question. <laughs> not feeling well. Um, how come the writers never made Brandon and Andrea an item, or at least have them hook up? He always seemed jealous whenever someone was interested in her. Great question. All right, Julia, thank you. We're going to say goodbye. That was a very good question. Okay. Unrequited love? You get something out of that. And that, and that I don't think that is a unique, what, if, if Andrea, if Andrea, excuse me, was, was pining for Brandon, <clears throat> then I imagine that the percentage of our audience also pined for the popular guy or the closest friend or something like that. And there was that little bit of dramatic tension. The, 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 when the line crosses, um, that's yeah. one thing, you know. Mm -hmm. I, you know and, and so you saw that again because of the, the old, you know, the friends. And, and um, had I stayed in season six, I wouldn't have got rid of Brandon and, and Valerie so easily. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. The dailies. <laughs> Hey, Erin, what do you think about the Brandon and Andrea thing? I really like them together. I would have liked to see where that went, but I also agree that it might not have been as interesting, you know, after a while. Yeah. Yeah, we're stuck with it, and then they got to break up, and then they're there. I mean, that's – and listen, I'm not – again, you guys know, I didn't – I don't come to this first through the rope. 
unlike Steve and Jessica that came there through soap operas who came in for interpersonal romance stories. That's not why I was brought in or is where I often uh, find myself. So to me, it's it's, it's like, well, there's, oh, you bring them together, you turn them apart, you bring them together. And right. after a while, that, that interrupts the dynamics. You know? Yeah. I love the season one finale, though, with them. Yeah. Couple of good ones here, and we get Maggie and Alicia here. But uh, uh, Simon wants to know, hey Charles, is there a storyline you were exceptionally proud of, or one that you would have done differently looking back at now? Greetings from Europe, love you people. Thank you, Simon. Very nice. So one is, is what would I, what, what would I do completely different than, um, and then one that really made me feel good. I think the one that that made me feel that I think was the biggest challenge in some ways was in season five, the one where um, the, the, the uh, Andrea had the professor's going to come and you have to deal with uh, uh, the, the Brandon's president and there's two sides pulling them apart. What is it? <laughs> Season five. Let's go. That's the one up in not injustice for all sentence to life. You mean the Rolling Stones episode? Are you talking about that? Are you talking about... No, I'm talking about the what it well from a producing standpoint, that was by Rock of Ages. Rolling Stones was by far the most fun. But yeah. it was the one with um hate is just a four-letter word. Right, which is that was, that was a that was a pretty tough construct. You you were built and it's the only one I, I bless I used to get a phone call from my parents after every episode. They the phone would ring and and pick it up. It used to be my mother on the phone this time it was my father and he said i didn't think you were going to get out of that one you know, <laughs> it was, you know, what are you going to actually do and and right. i think it was plausible on that one that i think you had to be rethought over would always be the one where uh destiny rides again that just when 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 um when dylan went out and, and yeah. the relationship that he had with the the older woman we could have got a lot out of that one and, yes. and and could have really had an interesting little sidelight and little world we could have established with him out in the country. You know, didn't need to be the older woman, although that's what, you know, the guys were were looking at. Look, the biggest challenge of doing the show was that we had three people who, our three leads wanted to be movie stars, all right. three. Hmm. And so when you're doing that, when, when you heard Hank talking about they were all in their things and all the promos and all the things going on. When that happens, you're you're looking above the, the proscenium. What's next? Yeah. And, and and so there was often that wanting to be older and more mature and more versatile than the characters would allow for and keep and keep them having to be true to the characters. All right, we got Alicia and Maggie. Maggie, we'll go with you. Well, Simon asked what I was gonna ask, which one was your favorite? So do you have a least? Favorite. Well, I have more than one. I mean, you know, I my, the most fun also was writing with Karen. Mm. Um, of the episodes that I wrote, my least favorite, even that have my name on it and say yes. the. Um. Huh. Well, the one that was the biggest disappointment, the dis business disappointment, and I and I think we're going to have to do a deep dive on this episode, Pete, because I I've looked through and it's the lowest rated episode we did. <laughs> and that is Ashes to Ashes in second year when 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 you know Vivica Fox and, yeah. and her family and Eugene Bird they move across the street. There was a lot to be done with that. Totally. And the the rating drop off was dramatic. And mm. it just was like, oh gosh, we were we were really missing that audience, you know. And when we and when we tried to reach out, there was a percentage of our audience. People who may be listening to us right and now that even then were not not interested. So that one is the dis disappointment, but that's how it was. Um, I would love to cover that. One. I know that Larry's disappointment is that the ratings of the Rolling Stone was so the Rolling Stones episode was so low because it was on Thanksgiving, uh, yeah. the Thanksgiving Eve, Eve Thanksgiving. That's still the one of the most fun episodes, the Rolling Stones episode. All right, Maggie, thank you for seeing uh, for coming here. Yep, yeah. and we save Alicia always has amazing questions, <laughs> so I saved her for last year. Uh, and I know you've always wanted to be on here, so welcome to the show. Yeah, thank um, you, thank you for that nice post today, Alicia. Yeah. So what do you got? Um, I have a question about um 
social issues. I've always loved the social issues that were on the shows. Do you have a favorite social issue episode? And was there one that you wanted to do and didn't get a chance to do? That's a great question. <clears throat> we, um, yes, the, the favorite ones, and, and they have to be in plural because, you know, certainly isn't it romantic. Some of the ones we've looked at here, isn't it romantic, the gentle art of listening, um, uh, certainly the, the, the first, the next 50 years, um, um, the, uh, you know, those stick, those stick out to me in terms of the social issue ones. Um, but uh, in terms of the areas we didn't get to write or didn't get to do well, um, I would have liked to, when, when Brenda came back from Europe, I would have wanted to deal with cigarette smoking. I wanted to, would have dealt to that issue. I would have wanted to go all season. And I was, uh, uh, I was, we were cut. We did one episode about it and like number eight and that was it. And that was unsatisfactory to me creatively. So that's a social issue in that regard. The other one was that Kyle, who was, uh, on the football team and, and one of the guys and had that with Kelly and wasn't that attracted and had that sexual ambiguity. Obviously we would have wanted to develop some kind of gay character as well. Um, and we were primed to do it uh, with, you know, we had the staff to do it, had, had game, gay men on our staff, young gay men yeah. and gay men and we're ready to have it happen. But it, it, the network wasn't ready. Um, I saw Jessica Klein wrote, thanks so much. So it looks like she's out and about maybe. Hopefully she's doing okay. Uh, good good to hear from you, Jessica. Oh, yay, Jessica. Yeah. Um, okay, I think we've gotten through all of these questions. Erin, it's always, thank you, Alicia, for that awesome question. Uh, very good to see you. Thank you. Erin, always Aaron, good. you're the most tolerant person. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> for dealing with all Having the changes this week. And, and yeah. all that, yeah. I was going to say, uh, my wife had a really good question about um, the incest storyline, but we're going to save it because I want to cover that episode down the line. Uh, just if you had, did you, did you guys get a big, any pushback for wanting to do that? And I'm sure that, Done that we did. it was because, uh, and, and with, with Jessica will be a big part of it. Yeah. It's because Jessica was great at pitching television shows, great at talking very fast and telling them and saying, <laughs> projecting, we're smart. We know what we're doing, and we're going to make this twist, and this twist is all going to be really good, and you're going to like it. And I'm just talking and, and getting the, and so she was great at it. Oh, let's perfect. save that and, for yeah. Let's save that. Yeah, for, yeah and for. she uh, did a great job, and we got it, it, and by certain choices that she made, we were able to have absolutely no pushback, and that startled me because wow. I assumed that it was going to be the most controversial episode we were going to do. Yeah, same. All right, well, well, we'll get into that at some other point. Uh, next week, we're still trying to figure out what it's going to be, but we have a couple really, really awesome things possible. The one thing you can be assured is that it will be something that you won't be able to see on Hulu. That's that's for sure. We're doing that uh, for a while. So we're, we're going to be doing that, and we, we reached out to a couple of people about possibly popping in and being our guest next week, so that might happen as well. Just a bunch of things up in the air, and we're we're uh, figuring it all out. We're not usually this haphazard, and we usually do know, but there's oh, a but spring is in the air, <laughs> and you can start quoting Shakespeare. Well, we know on May fifth we're going to cover Venom spots turn to spring or whatever it is. May fifth, right? We said we're going to cover uh, the Mexican standoff episode from season two. That's going to be a lot of fun. So that's okay. that's, that's in the books. We've got that one. <laughs> yeah, that one. Is yeah. that the one that get caught on the border, or the one where they come back? Uh, maybe we'll do maybe we'll do the 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 the, the whole little bit there both the of whole, thing. Yeah. yeah all right cool this has been great guys uh no everyone's asking are we gonna do an after dark this was the after dark this <laughs> what else would we after dark <laughs> right yeah, Mike, what, that was the after dark this was the after dark we just did the after dark so no not tonight uh but next week we'll definitely be back with that after the show Erin always good to see you uh hopefully you I'll see you in person again soon too one day yeah well. all right awesome. All right, guys. Thanks so much. All right. Bye. Bye, Pete.